Hello viewers and subscribers! I'm excited to present to you my first pilot episode of Candid Camera, what Canadians think they know about sexual assault law. This is a sampling of what's to come. And boy, what an eye-opening experience this first run has been. First of all, I have to admit how surprising it was how, so far, participants have asked not to have their faces recorded for this particular conversation. One person said for fear of losing their job. I think that speaks volumes for how people are afraid to discuss this very serious topic for fear of being persecuted for having what some might deem an unpopular opinion. Nonetheless, I'm highly motivated to capture the public's opinion and candid, unplanned comments. Thankfully, most of them agreed to have their feet and voices recorded so that viewers have no doubt these are legitimately real random people that I've never met and have not prepared ahead of time. So if you find this content beneficial, please let me know by subscribing to my YouTube channel, leaving a comment, and consider supporting my work by becoming a patron. Link below in the description bar. And now I present to you episode number one. So first of all, what's your educational background? Uh, I went to Laurier for criminology. Okay, and what's your profession now? Uh, I actually, I work in HVAC. Okay, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Sometimes these things take time. Yeah. All right, so let me ask you the first question is, what do you think is the legal definition of sexual assault? Sexual assault? Oh. Um, I think it encompasses everything from harassment to, um, you know, inappropriately touching someone's leg to uh, physically um, penetrating someone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's a very broad definition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So first, can I ask what your educational background is? Yeah, I got a bachelor's. Okay. And what's your current profession? I work in finance. Okay. So what do you think is the legal definition of sexual assault? <laughs> the legal definition? The basic legal definition should be when it's against the, somebody's will. The sexual act is against somebody's will. Right? No sexual act in itself will constitute a crime, right? Consent would be the issue here. How would you think it's proven or disproven in a court of law whether or not any touching had any sexual intent behind it? Well, unfortunately, with our criminal justice system, it, it's, a, it's really sad. People, you can, you can have proof, you can have video proof, and it doesn't always count. It's it's all up for interpretation. A lot of times, it doesn't necessarily depend on the proof you have, but it depends more on the person who's accusing sexual background. Okay. Um, so then, how would you think it's proven or disproven in a court of law whether or not consent was given for sex? It's not either. The, you, you know, you can prove that somebody was so intoxicated they didn't know their own name, and still there's questions. Well, did you or did you not? Would you think it's proven or disproven in a court of law whether or not any touching had sexual intent behind it? Yeah, I assume, you know, given my pessimistic outlook, that they simply asked a person claiming there was sexual assault. Okay. And how would you think it's proven or disproven in a court of law whether or not consent was given to a sex yeah, act? Same thing. What type of evidence do you think is required for a police officer yeah, to arrest a person who's been accused of a sex crime? You, you would think someone's saying or having proof, but again, it's not always the case. Okay, so, so someone saying meaning somebody making the claim that it happened? Yeah, until it can be proven not, it should be investigated in my opinion. But. Okay, so you think that's, that's uh, requ the, the required evidence in order for a police officer to arrest you is just that they've made the claim? Maybe not arrest to investigate, but to arrest I think you need solid evidence. Okay, that's a good point. So what if I told you that evidence is not absolutely necessary to conduct an investigation? I would say for some people in some senses that that's unfortunate because it unfortunately I mean you see it in the media all the time people are criminalized with little to no evidence but then there's the opposite side where you do have evidence and nothing happens anyways. Well what type of evidence do you think is required for the police to arrest a person accused of a sex crime? Yeah, same I guess as my answer beforehand simply as long as there's a claim they can go ahead with an arrest. Okay. And what would you think if I told you that evidence is not absolutely necessary to conduct an investigation? Wait, 
that seems to be the least of my worries here because you you do conduct an you do have an investigation to, to gather evidence, right? Well, that's what one would assume. But you're saying no evidence is necessary to conduct an investigation. The Toronto Police Services have a website called yourchoice.to, uh, which was funded by the Ontario okay. government okay. in partnership with a legal advocacy group for survivors of sexual assault and Ryerson University. And on this website, they actually have a downloadable document called A Guide for Sexual Assault Survivors. Yeah. And in it, it is actually stated that evidence is not absolutely necessary to conduct an investigation. Yeah, I predicted that when you said Ryerson. What would you think if I told you that the police can arrest and charge an accused person before conducting an investigation? I would say that's unfortunate and not really fair. It's, it's biased towards the victim. All right, that statement is also made on yourchoice.to, which is uh, presented by the Toronto Police Services. Wow. What would you think if I told you that the police can arrest and charge an accused person before conducting an investigation? Yeah, at this point I'm not surprised anymore. Do you think that there's something fundamentally wrong with the fact that police can arrest and charge an accused person before doing an investigation? For sure. Definitely. Does it tell you anything else? Does it concern you in any specific way? I think it does because that's where you see in the media people, you know, someone can post something on Facebook that's not factual at all and someone gets arrested and their whole life is ruined off of something that's not factual. Yes. Or that's been proven. Do you think there's something fundamentally wrong with the fact that police can arrest and charge an accused person before doing an investigation? Yeah, especially if this leaks over into other areas of crime, right? This can be a precedent for other things beyond sexual assault. It's a slippery slope.